Today we're talking about Paris, the city of fights. Last weekend there were massive violent protests over a 25 cent per gallon fuel tax. Ah, France, the only country to attack itself to lower fuel prices. Why don't you just find a Middle Eastern country to democratize like the rest of us? I get it though, attack a country you know you can beat. The French government has announced that the country will suspend for six months a fuel tax that sparked violent protests in Paris. So what's going on in France? Did they just learn they have to work on Fridays now too? Well, as we just heard, they're implementing a gas tax of an additional 25 cents a gallon. So people decided to see if they could use infrastructure as an alternative fuel source by setting it ablaze. A 25 cent a gallon tax though. That really doesn't seem like it would inspire the massive protest that it got. Well, if this protest was just about that tax, I definitely would not be writing this episode today. The whole protest revolves around the Yellow Vest Movement, a movement named for the roadside safety vests adopted by its protesters as a symbol of their distress and despair. You know things are bad when you have French people willingly hitting the streets in yellow vests. This thing is not even Ralph Lauren. So what is the Yellow Vest Movement? There, it's a little less movement, so it's proving to be much more uh, difficult. The most apt comparison you can make is either Occupy Wall Street, except more arson and violence, or the Tea Party Movement if you're very optimistic. There's some themes that carry over in their manifesto, but overall it's about as focused as an 8th grader in 6th period math class. The range of issues is huge because this may have started out as a fuel tax protest, but it certainly isn't just about that now. This is about the cost of living, it's about respect, it's about a huge swathe of people in France who don't feel that they're listened to at all, and it's personal. Some of it is about Emmanuel Macron. People actually dislike him as a person. I love how she treats not liking the French president as though it's a surprise. Well, it's hard to believe that when you combine a French person with a successful investment banker, you're generally going to get something unlikable. Overall, though, these protests go far in highlighting a deeper problem in France. Because if you can look past the Eiffel Tower, you'll see an economy that isn't doing great. Their monthly median income is 1,700 euros, which is less than half of the United States. And that's median income. They have 1.8% growth, which let's put that in perspective quickly. President Barack Obama says he knows the top question on voters' minds this election year is why has the economic recovery been so painfully slow? At that point, we were growing at about 2%, a little faster than France currently is. And if you look at their growth, it's flatter than a surfboard. They currently have above 9% unemployment, which is about our unemployment rate at the height of the recession. And all that brings us to the heart of the protests. Because France has a severe spending problem. I'm not sure if you've heard, but their government really takes care of everything, and that service doesn't come cheap. The Bank of France governor and European Central Bank governing council member recently said France is the only major European country that has both a large budget deficit and company funding needs, creating the conditions of a lasting exterior debt. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not against government entitlements. In fact, in researching my own healthcare options, I kind of feel like America's focusing on the wrong reduction in the whole two things are inevitable, death and taxes equation. This is where the controversy really comes in though, because how do you pay for those services? First up though, tax cuts for businesses and individuals and job cuts in the public sector. Emmanuel Macron's second budget is holding firm on his promise to cut France's debt and budget deficit. France's Macron tried a new strategy, corporate tax cuts to get growth moving and laying off some public sector employees. It's hard to feel sorry for them though knowing that they still have better healthcare than most employed Americans. Clearly though that's going to turn some heads in an avowed socialist country. That's not actually the problem area even though. Things start to get controversial when you remember what this protest was actually about. This morning, France's government says that it will suspend a controversial fuel tax that triggered weeks of violent protests. A fuel tax. And there are plenty of ways of paying for different things, but two main ones are progressive taxes and flat taxes. 
We don't really see regressive taxes too much because higher taxes for poorer people is such a bad idea even the richest of economists are struggling to come up with justification. The problem is that, in France, while taxes are greatest on the upper income earners, France also has a value added tax of 20% on most goods and services. A 20% tax? That means you might be tipping the government more than you're tipping your server. This is where the problem starts for some people, because when you start taxing all goods and services, well, in an obvious response, those goods and services get more expensive. Protesters are upset about rising prices and a declining standard of living. This is where protesters start lighting things on fire, though. Because if you're funding the government through taxes on goods, well, everyone's paying the same amount for those goods. It would be like solving America's debt problem by charging each US citizen $64,476. We do that and we'll be debt free. People with billions of dollars would support that idea, while people with say $64,000 might not be as big a fan. A similar logic would apply if, say, we said we were planning on raising the price of everything by $1 to pay down the taxes. Imagine how bad it would look if your country started cutting corporate taxes and raising the price of fuel by 25 cents a gallon to pay for things. That would not be a good look. Especially if, again, the guy's an investment banker with some friends that are definitely not hurting from this. If you look at these policies from a different context though, you can kinda see where France is coming from. Calling on the French government to scrap its high taxes on fuel aimed at reducing air pollution. According to the government, this was raising the price to disincentivize people from using gasoline. And that's a totally reasonable thing to do. In America, we have what are called sin taxes, which despite sounding like something you would pay by being paddled in a room with Gregorian chants in the background, it's just an extra tax for things the government doesn't want you doing like buying cigarettes or candy. The problem arises when your economy is running on fumes. It's not a good time to raise gas prices. And a reminder for why it's not a good idea to get on the nerves of poor French people, after the protest written on the Arc de Triomphe was, we've chopped off heads for less than this. Man, even I think that's rough and I read the comments on my Reddit posts. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button below. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and remember to give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.